Hello, my name is Valeria and I am in charge of cardiology procedures and also the stroke program education here at Hemet Valley Medical Center. Today the topic of our discussion will be stroke and we will dis be discussing stroke in uh, two hospitals, Hemet Valley Medical Center and Menifee Valley Medical Center. And so we will start by discussing the signs and symptoms of stroke. Everybody should be uh, conscious of the fact that we have an acronym to uh, look for and to learn from, which is comprised of be fast. So the B stands for balance, I stands for sudden eye uh, change in vision, face, sudden weakness of the face, arms, sudden weakness of the arm or leg, and speech, which includes any difficulty speaking. So these are the signs we're looking for when we uh, are trying to identify any kind of change in condition for a patient that may be suffering from a stroke. Here at Hemet Valley Medical Center, we are accredited as a primary stroke center. Basically, what that means is that we are allowed to administer TPA, which is a treatment for an ischemic stroke. The difference with a comprehensive stroke center is that a comprehensive stroke center will have all the capabilities to treat any kind of strokes, such as neurosurgery. Therefore, they do have a neurosurgeon on staff and they do have a dedicated OR and neuro ICU. We at Hemet Valley Medical Center can only administer TPA. Just FYI, the accreditation was obtained last year on May the 17th, and we are continuing to do very well at this point, and we hope to be growing from here. So, what do we do if a patient is suspected to have a stroke? So we will have two pathways. The first one here at Hemet Medical Center, and the second one at Menifee. We have to keep in mind that Manifi Medical Center is not a stroke accredited center, so things will be done differently. Here at Hemet Valley Medical Center, we have a specific clinical pathway to follow when we suspect a stroke. A specific timeline has been defined by the Stroke Association within the United States, and so we will be discussing the time targets. So from the moment somebody suspects a stroke, the number to call here at Hemet Valley Medical Center is 300. That will activate a cold stroke. We will be following this pathway here, and so we will be starting with activating the rapid response team and the code 300. That would automatically send the page to the attending physician in the emergency room. Once the code stroke is called, we will have a team that will arrive at bedside, and the team will be comprised of the ER physician, the house supervisor, the attending physician, if the physician is on site, ICU and ER nurses, lab, respiratory therapy, and any kind of other ancillary personnel such as uh, physical therapy or anybody that can actually get involved and help with the case. Residents are also part of the team here. So for the nurses at bedside who have called the code stroke, the most important thing to remember is that um, you have to be ready. So what that means is you have to have the information ready to be propagated for the doctors when they arrive. So in other words, make sure you have your wall station at bedside, make sure you have the patient chart at bedside, so that if there's any kind of question in regards to labs, for example, you can easily access the information. Another thing we have to think about is what mimics the symptoms of a stroke. Two things are very common, and the most common one is hypoglycemia. Therefore, when we do call a cold stroke, we would like the nurses to be ready with an accurate check result. This way, when the physician arrives at bedside, because of the time constraints, we are ready to uh, rule out hypoglycemia. So again, the three things we need to have ready at bedside would be the computer, the patient chart, and an accurate accurate check for a blood sugar measurement. When the physician arrives at bedside, it will be conducting a comprehensive NIHH stroke scale assessment. This is very important so we can determine the baseline and the changing condition. The second part of this team is comprised of the teleneuro robot. So here at Hemet Valley Medical Center, um, this robot basically takes place for the neurosurgeon because we do not have a neurosurgeon on staff. And so we have been contracted with an outside facility which provides the services for us. The 
the way this works is that once we call a call stroke, there's a number to call at the back of this machine, and the unit secretary initiates the call. This activates their response, and the average response time is seven minutes. They, they have to respond within 10 minutes, but as I said, the average response time is usually around seven minutes. So when the team arrives at bedside, they will be bringing the machine from the nurse's supervisor office. It's very important that everybody's familiar with the location of this machine. So again, it is located in the emergency room in the nurse supervisor office. Usually the house supervisor will be bringing the teleneural robot or the ER nurse. The moment the machine arrives in the patient room, it needs to be connected so that we do not lose any kind of power and we are able to conduct an appropriate assessment. Once the physician is online, it's um, basically the same thing as FaceTime. We have the physician, the provider here on the screen, and the machine itself that can have multiple functions. Now keep in mind that this machine has to be manipulated by a, by a human being because it cannot move on its own. So when we want to zoom in um, onto the patient, for example, we have to move the machine back and forth or around the bed. If there's such a need for private communication with the physician, the machine has capability for a phone, so then we can talk to the physician in private. For every code stroke that is called here at Hammond Valley Medical Center, we have at the back of the machine, you can find these binders and they have all the information inside to navigate a cold stroke, including here the TPA administration guidelines and two audit forms. These will have to be completed at the end of the cold stroke so that we can adequately trace um, what has happened during the code. The folder will follow the patient from the room to the ICU, for example, if the patient is transferred to the ICU. So it is really, really important that this um, folder is transmitted between the different care units. Once we have the team in place and the initial assessment was conducted, the patient has to go to CT scans. We have specific guidelines here where the, medic the doctor has to see the patient within five minutes. And the CT of the head has to be completed within 10 minutes. Those guidelines are very important so we can keep up the pace and stay within the time limit for TPA administration, which is 45 minutes. After finishing the CT of the, uh, of the head, the patient is returned to the room and second IV is obtained. Uh, the reason why we need a second IV is that we're getting ready to administer TPA if it is indeed an ischemic stroke that requires this kind of treatment. And so, um, TPA itself requires a dedicated line. It cannot be mixed with any other medication. At the same time, different labs are drawn. We're talking about CBC, CMP, PT, PTT. And lab is there at bedside to assist with those things. Also, the nurses from the emergency room do have ISTAT capability, which means that they can run labs through a specific machine that's portable and brought at bedside. The CT scan is read within 20 minutes. To ensure that this happens, nurses have to make sure that when they enter the orders for the different labs and imaging for a cold stroke, they use an adequate set of orders that has been built into Paragon. And so this way we do not enter orders one by one. There's, when we uh, activate a cold stroke, the nurse can go into Paragon and type in stroke as a set of orders and that will populate all the orders needed for a cold stroke. It's very important to use that set of orders because a CT scan has to be read stat. As we know, and I will reemphasize, it has to be read within 20 minutes. And so when we use that set of orders, it will prompt the radiologist to go ahead and read its stat so we have it ready for the neurosurgeon that's waiting here. Once we have the results of the CT scan as, as well as the labs, our attending physician will have a discussion with the neurosurgeon and they will both look at the same results, the imaging, the lab results, the neuro exam, and decide, first of all, what the diagnosis is. Are we speaking about an ischemic stroke or a hemorrhagic stroke? So now we're going to go ahead and follow the pathway of diagnosis here. If, if it is a hemorrhagic stroke, 
is it something that can be treated here or if the patient requires a higher level of care will be transferred out to a different stroke center which offers treatment for hemorrhagic strokes. If it is an ischemic stroke, we have to question will the, uh, the patient benefit from TPA. If that is the case, the TPA will be initiated and the bolus has to be administered in 45 minutes or less. Once the TPA is started, the patient will be transferred to the ICU for further level of care and to ensure that the entire process is completed um, in the shortest amount of time, dictated, of course, by the TPA guidelines. For Manifi Valley Medical Center, Manifi Valley Medical Center is not a primary stroke center. Therefore, if you suspect a stroke, the first thing to do is to activate the rapid response team. Again, the same team will arrive, the ICU nurse, the ER nurse, attending physician if on site, the ER physician, respiratory lab. The emergency physician will initiate diagnosis and conduct the initial assessment. But if the patient is suspected to have a stroke, a patient will be transferred to a higher level of care, either here at Hammond Valley Medical Center or somewhere else based on the patient's needs. One thing to also remember, all nurses have to obtain their NIH stroke certification yearly and they have to be um, showing proof that they have accomplished and show certification and so that we can have an appropriate way of evaluating our patients and follow the, the national guidelines. One thing to remember is that anybody can call a code, um, CNAs, nurses, it is everybody's responsibility if they walk in a patient room and think that there's something wrong with the patient to notify the bedside nurse so then a code stroke can be called right away. Well, this is it for me today and I thank you for your participation and I wish you a wonderful day.